say that because I got red hair. So just don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but I put it away. If anything, you make it look good, though. <laughs> Thank you. We're kind of you. We're kind of you. But I was like, you only brown nose with so much. No, I'm messing. I've known you too long for me to be. <laughs> But I, I appreciate you for um, joining me in the studio. And um, I say this, like I said, because um, you, some people, once they, once they leave office, they go, who knows, go do some anything. You know, there's some that go and do, continue to do work. And then some just say, you know what, let me just go and take a break and go, I don't know, play golf or something. <laughs> I don't know. Go, on, go on, on, on cruises and all kinds of stuff, but you didn't do that. Now, first of all, before we start talking about that, how has it been since you left, um, or you termed out um, as state representative? How has it been since you left office? Well, let me say this. I loved being uh, uh, in the General Assembly. I loved being a member of the House of Representatives. Um, you get four two-year terms, and I, you know, I served my eight years there, and I think I was pretty, you know, pretty respected. I think I did what I was supposed to be doing, representing oh, yeah. people of my district and worked hard for them. Um, I'm now working for the for Cuyahoga County. I'm the director of sustainability. And I'm I, I gotta tell you I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm I'm uh, when I was at the House of Representatives, I, look, I was a very liberal Democrat in a very conservative Republican body, and mm-hmm. it was beating your head against the wall pretty consistently. <laughs> right? um, now, you know, look, today we were able to announce uh, with our Department of Sustainability and our county executive, Armin Budish, and working with uh, some of the county council people, uh, Sonny Simon and, and Dan Brady, our president. Mm-hmm. We announced today that we were going to have $120 million dollars available for Cuyahoga County uh, businesses and institutions and churches mm-hmm. and eventually residents to do like clean energy work to, to help make their homes more efficient and businesses more efficient and um, in some cases putting up renewable power, solar power right. uh, on, their, on, on their structure. So it, it's in one sense, at least for me, it's being with the county now is, you know, there's, uh, I feel like uh, I'm in a place where we can actually get some stuff done rather than having to beat my head against the wall, which I feel like I had to do without the General Assembly. <laughs> right. Um, but that there's there's real opportunities here in the county, and uh, with Executive Budish, I think we're, we're, you know, we're trying to take advantage of them. Right. Now, you mentioned, um, again, like you said, the director of the Department of Sustainability, but nobody knows what that means because you all are, it, it, matter of fact, it was just created, what, February of this year, right? So we uh, yeah, it was created in legislation last year. Mm-hmm. Councilwoman Simon created it, uh, the Department of Sustainability, and then uh, Executive Budish hired the first director. I was the first director. Right. So I, I looked at actually, I was looking at my you know timesheet in the mornings. I'm signing it. And I've been in office now or uh, in the position now for two months and seventeen days. So that's <laughs> how long the department has been uh, been around. Um, but what it is is it so it's. Um, you know, it's it's looking at both. It, you know, it's a, it's an office or department that tries to uh, f- figure out. You know, can how do, how can we kind of manage ourselves, manage our community, so that we're, we're not just thinking about today, but we're thinking about tomorrow as well. Right. right. And that you know, there's generations and generations. Hopefully, of people are going to be in Cuyahoga County um, beyond our you know our current existence, and that we just can't use everything up. Right. We can't right, just use right. all the resources. So. So we try to think about energy and environmental issues uh, and hopefully put and, and also hopefully, you know, do things in a more efficient manner. Um, and uh, so we save resources for for today that will help save resources for tomorrow. Right. And and of course, I, now, I didn't know exactly when I wanted to mention this, but of course, you have quite a bit of background in regards to environmental um, issues being that you were the director of the Environmental Health Watch. No, I was not. That, that was, was Mike Pepsney, my right. very good friend, Mike Pepsney. Right. But I worked with those guys pretty frequently when I was right, in the Cleveland right. Tennis Organization. And, there we uh, go. Okay. I was, I was director of the Cleveland Tennis Organization for about 10 years. And okay. I don't know why I want to put you. You got to yeah, have it. We work yeah. so closely together. We, people get I thought he succeeded you. I thought that's what it was. He succeeded me at Cleveland Tennis Organization. Okay. And then he went over to Environmental Health Watch. But, right. Yeah. So, and I'm a, I'm a little sad because I, you know, I saw a Facebook post about 
where he's going now. So, like, oh no, Mike is living. Well, Mike, he'll stay in town, but he's, he uh, he just got a job with uh, AFSCME as a, a, yeah. a staff organizer. So it's good for him. He's he's pretty excited about it, I think. So yeah, yeah. He'll be working yeah. with the labor movement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, again, with environmental um, issues are very important again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, <clears throat> just kind of going back and, you know, they say you always got to start at the head. And the president talked about it in his um, campaigns and even during his um, his terms, you know, in regards to clean energy and solar power and um, wind, ter- wind wind power and all that kind of stuff. And the thing about it is eventually it does have to work its way down, but not very, I mean, I haven't heard of many cities that are really doing that. And, but to hear that Kyle Hoger County has really taken a major step or really say, you know what, we really need to get a hold of this, especially when we're talking about financially speaking. And when, we, when you talk about businesses, you know, doing that, because that's one of the things that you all are, it said you all are going to do, promote environmental sustainability business practices and internal operations of the county. I mean, how, how does that, for biz, as far as business-wise, when they talk about sustainability with business practices, what does that mean? So it's, you know, so the, I think the big thing we've done is we've been able to, um, we've been able to get $120 million from private investors, by the way. Okay. We're just interested in investing their dollars, and they're going to make money back, right? Mm-hmm. But, but just in Cuyahoga County. And so what that'll mean is that, so, you know, look, we, we met with um, the Council of Smaller Enterprises today, and they're saying, you know, look, we've done, we've helped businesses do all these energy audits. Right. Um, so they'll go in and they'll, you know, look at um, how old their HVAC equi- equipment is, uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, how old their, uh, their lighting systems are, what kind of light bulbs they're using, uh, how old their motors are, maybe they're doing some manufacturing, um, and thinking about, uh, you know, we, we can we can identify savings mm-hmm. if you can invest in the capital. Well, there's no capital out there, right, Right. Uh, for, for this type of stuff. So we've been able to bring in, we're going to be able to bring in the capital, um, and then what it will mean is, so someone may be able to invest, you know, we, we can help them think this stuff through, maybe want to invest $50,000, right, mm-hmm. uh, into... Uh, a new lighting system and a new HVAC system, um, and you may. And what it'll do is it'll, it'll take you maybe five or six years to pay that back. But because of the savings in your electricity bill and your energy bills, mm-hmm. you're going to have more in savings than you would have in financing the cost of, of build, you know, building in those new systems. Mm. So, so basically, we're helping people. Uh, Invest in their businesses, which is a good thing, right? Because if course. you're investing in your business, that means you're staying here. You're not going somewhere else. Right, outsourcing. Your yeah, you're not. That's right. You're you're staying here. Um, you you're putting new equipment into your business, uh, and you're also saving money. You're, you're cash flow positive mm-hmm. from from right from the beginning. And you know, especially for me, what what it also means is that you are reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Wow. Uh, because, you know, these things are so much more efficient. These systems are so much more efficient than, than they were even five or six years ago. Right. That the, the amount of uh, pollution and uh, greenhouse gases going up into the atmosphere will be pretty drastically reduced, and we're going to be able to measure all that. So that's the, that's the other great thing about this program is we're going to be able to measure that, not only just the re- reduction in greenhouse gases, but the amount of jobs we're going to be creating out of this. So the estimate is for every $1 million you invest in uh, clean energy type mm-hmm. work, you, there's 17 jobs created. Wow. Um, so, and they're good paying jobs. They're, they're decent paying jobs. So we're going to be able to measure that uh, as we go forward, as we move forward. Right. Now, again, now, because I was going to ask that, because people say, okay, you, you created a department, you know, of course, and then you mentioned $120 million, and where is that going to go to? Now, what kind of jobs would be created because me i have no idea I, I mean i love the environment i'm not a tree hugger or anything but you know i think that's about as far as i can go it is a tree hugger I have no, you know, so it's it's look it's electricians right it's laborers right. it's it's uh um you know guys who do um uh, you know um pipe fitting right okay or hvac hvac systems and, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 those kind of trades jobs that we've got, you know, we've got some pretty talented people who know how to do some of that stuff here, mm-hmm. right? Do it here, um, and but there's going to be a need. This investment will help bring in more need for that. So, right. uh, so the trades are kind of the places where 
uh, the, the majority of the work will be coming from. And because we're using the county as the way to filter out, filter the, the, the jobs into and the money coming down from, we're downloading the money, mm -hmm. it's coming through this, we're calling it a hub through the county. Um, there are like prevailing wage standards that, that right. attach itself. So the, so the pay scale for the work is pretty, is pretty decent. Okay, but then you also now when you talk about that as well, because you also have construction. Would you all also be involved in the different some of the different construction projects? Because of course you can't. I mean, you want to rehab what's here. You want people to um, definitely upgrade what's already existing. But then there's quite a few other buildings that are being built throughout Cuyahoga County. What is your we what what would be um, the Department of Sustainability's roles in these um, projects? So that's a it's a great question and. and um, and actually one I asked about uh, three or four weeks ago as we kind of were working through this stuff. So maybe there's a new parking garage that's being built, right? Right. And the parking garage will have, you know, kind of regular, current, state-of-the-art lighting. Mm -hmm. um, but if they want to get, you know, the next best or the, you know, even better lighting system, right, mm -hmm. then we can help finance that better lighting system, and it can be financed in, in the savings and the energy costs from the regular to the better you can use as the way to pay back, you know, make, make your, both finance the loan mm -hmm. and, and make money off of the, the financing from, from day one. So right. that's, so for new construction, there's things like that. So that, um, it's called kind of imputed or, uh, uh, savings on, um, on new construction, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see where that goes. I mean, we've actually had a couple garage systems that have we been talking to or kind of been in the mix about potentially, uh, using this stuff. Wow. And, see, and, that, and that's important. <clears throat> like I, I mean, honestly, the money is is, is I, I've heard this even before. <clears throat> you heard about the Department of Sustainability. Is is all the money that comes in? Just where does this money go? <laughs> it's like you see these big, amazing structures, but it's like God, could we have saved any money somewhere in there? Again, like you said, especially um, when you talk about being energy efficient. You know, um, that that is major for, you know, a city. What you going to say? No, it's like, we're, I mean, we're not going to, I mean, look, our little department and our $120 million is not going to finance the new construction of, you right. know, uh, of a, a new ball field. But we can, we may, we can help with the financing of the energy parts. And as these guys, and I'm learning this stuff, as they develop new projects or new, you know, buildings or new uh, endeavors mm -hmm. you know they they kind of stack their funding right so they've they've got a, a stack of funding and financing just for the energy system just for right. the uh, plumbing systems you know just for you know building a, you know buying the land for assembling land for and things like this so, so right. we're going to help in in terms of we'll have uh if we're asked you know uh, we, you know we'll have the ability to help in terms of the energy funding right but i really do think that probably most of the stuff especially up front will be in existing buildings that want to become more efficient um, or right. people who may want to put up solar panels. Um, you know, uh, solar panels, the great thing about solar panels, if you buy them, you know, if you buy them now, there's a federal tax credit mm -hmm. of 30% that expires at the end of December of, of 2016. So it's about 18 months to use this federal tax credit. Um, it's basically 30% off the, uh, your purchase price. So you get to take off your taxes. Right. So, uh, we think that over the next 18 months, there's going to be a um, kind of a mini boom in terms of trying to get as much solar up as possible before that tax credit goes away, and we can help, uh, you know, in the financing of that. Right, and, and that's now most people don't understand we're talking about solar panels because mind you, you you some of the things you hear about, like I said, even with wind power. I mean, most of these m most people have no idea what the benefit of solar power is. Cost, I mean, from a cost wise, we definitely want to talk about, you know, how the um, the residents, like I say, can, can benefit from the um, the Department of Sustainability. But just for what you just mentioned, how beneficial is, you know, solar power? I mean, cost efficient, um, energy efficient. What is solar power? So there's solar panels that you maybe you put on your rooftop, or you maybe you put them on, uh, maybe. In create like parking decks on them or something you know, right. like, or you know like cmha has you know the, there's a field behind their um uh their headquarters um right they've got a one megawatt complex of solar panels which which i think 
you know, is the equivalent of a powering about 750 homes. I forget, actually, I forget what that number is, but it's a lot of potential homes. So what it does is it's, they're basically these kind of glass and kind of um, structures, and, and there's kind of layered with a whole bunch of different kind of compounds in them. Mm -hmm. And they are able to turn sunlight into electricity. Um, and um, the cost for, um, you know, uh, let's see, the cost of, right now, if you buy electricity from something like, you know, from our basic generation of, of power, which is through coal-fired power plants and first energy, right. uh, CPP, it's probably like six or seven cents per kilowatt. They measure these things by kilowatt hour. And for solar, right now, it's maybe about nine or 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So it's a little bit more expensive. Right. Um, but and it's kind of the equivalent. But once you buy solar, that price is never going to go up again. Right. So you're always going to be at that nine cents. Whereas coal fired power uh, and the power you get from the electricity grid through, you know, kind of first energy. Right. Is going to go up and up and up and up every year. Right. So. Wow. Um, so the, a lot of people are thinking, well, if I buy the solar panels and put them up now, uh, I can use this credit. I can help write down my costs mm -hmm. and um, I can pay these things off in 10 or 15 years which at that point, then I will not have any more, you know, I won't have to, it may, may take 10 to 15 years to finance the purchase of these panels, but after that time, I won't have to pay anything else, and I'm just getting free electricity. Right. Um, rather than the, the nine cents I'm paying now. But the other thing to think of is, and is that nine cents is constant for that 10 or 15 year period I'm financing. That's basically the equivalent of, of how I'm financing these things. Uh, whereas, the uh, power generated by you know coal-fired power plants and right. it's going to go up and up and up. So, right, and and that's why well, I know I recently I had a couple of people come to my house, you know, and ask me about these different programs mm -hmm. because of exactly that. And but I'm I'm assuming it's, it's, it's almost inevitable, you know, that these prices are going to go up. It is. It's inevitable for a couple reasons. Um, one is that climate change is real, it's, right? And we've got to get off of coal-fired power. It's just it's one of the, the electric the electricity system is one of the major pollutants into um, uh, putting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And in Ohio, about seventy percent of our electricity is generated by coal-fired power plants. Mm -hmm. and coal is the worst, um, uh, you know, kind of sinner in terms of putting uh, emissions into the atmosphere. So it's going to have to change because the climate's getting, you know, we're, we're not, we're not doing anything better to, for the climate yet. We've got to, we've got to change the way we do things. Climate change is real. Global warming is, is going to affect us. Right. Um, the other thing is that the EPA, the, the uh, under the Obama administration is really starting to crack down is, uh, is going to put out rules this coming year, really cracking down on, on coal fired power plants. Mm -hmm. So especially states like Ohio that have 70% of their power generated by coal, um, those things are going to become more expensive to operate wow. uh, because of federal EPA rules. And so that, that those figures for coal as a generation source are just going to keep going up and up and up. Right. And that, again, that, that makes a lot of sense when you say that. Um, I, I do pay attention, like I said, to, you know, the politics. And, again, I, I never forget them. Some people say, well, how in the world can you um, – you know, when so I say some politicians, when you say something, and, and no, of course you're not talking about you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they say some politicians make promises to do some things, you know, but it never happens. But honestly, again, when you're talking about living healthy, you know, of course his wife has um, she just celebrated five years with her get it moving um, initiative. You know, so again, That's right. right? That's right. You can't live healthy if you're constantly putting pollution into your system whether it be food or whether it be um energy you know whether like i said with coal and it's kind of crazy because i watch kenan here i don't know if you watch kenan here probably not I haven't seen no <laughs> somebody's like oh my goodness he did not he's not doing a kenan the camera reference but um <laughs> they always talk about um as far as what is it coal versus propane okay you know uh, and they say I guess propane, gas, you know? right? Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. You know, we talk about um, cooking out, you know, with barbecue and stuff like that. And most people think coal is better to use than propane. Now, mind you, again, propane is a little more expensive, mm -hmm. but it's healthier. And, and again, 
environmentally speaking, it, it, it's, it's safer. But then if you again, if you're using coal, it's like, okay, now first of all, you got to deal with ashes. And most people, I ain't going to lie to you, I'm one of those countries, I have no idea what to do with my ashes. <laughs> it's probably sitting in my backyard. No, I'm not saying. <laughs> we, we, we put it in a bag and we put it in a trash can. But you never, you really don't pay attention to um, energy-wise what it is doing. Well, the other thing is it, it, it's, it's, it's health. It's public health, right? So, um, the, you know, coal is a, um, you know, it, it's a trigger of, uh, especially in, in areas that are urban areas, um, it's, it's a pollutant into the atmosphere, right? Right. Uh, and um, it, it, it hurts communities um, that are close to emissions uh, and it, it triggers up asthma and it triggers up allergens right and as um, so there's those kind of things that start off right off the bat but then with climate change and, and you know we're having warmer we will have warmer longer uh, uh, summer seasons right but also within the summer seasons they're going to be hotter there will be periods of uh, kind of intense heat and when that happens, the ozone levels uh, at the ground level um, build up to a greater extent. Right. And that really triggers folks with asthma and allergy problems. So, right. And, and sends a lot, of kids, a lot of kids, basically, to, to the hospital. Um, and, and, and it's a, so kids, people with allergies and, and asthma should really be concerned about this because we really do need to clean up the grid uh, and minimize the extent possible of the problems of climate change. Right. And see, again... It's, 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 kind of, it's kind of funny, you know, um, <clears throat> when you're younger and you hear about these different things. I, oh, I know one thing. It was always Smokey the Bear. That was the that was the first environmentalist I ever knew about right. was Smokey the Bear. Right, yeah. Only you can prevent forest fires. Yeah. But nobody underst really understood because, first of all, you know, again, when when stuff like that burns, that's not helping anything. It's more, first of all, it's it's hurting because again trees do what they help clean the air right so if you, so you knock out if you knock down all the trees mm -hmm. so you're just basically saying you know what i'm going to clean it out somehow and your body's not even able to handle that right. you know right. now because i say what well, we're going to go to commercial break but um one of the biggest things that i, I think is important is for businesses to really take hold on this and, and I will ask you this because well, I'm going to ask you this question. Then when we come back, we're going to talk about, you know, how business can benefit because some businesses feel like, okay, well, I'm going to invest in all this money. And even though you all would help, it's like, okay, really? I mean, is it going to, is it really going to help business for me to make all these changes? You know, first of all, I might have to shut my store down or, you know, who knows what has to go happen, especially if they are to go. Let me, yeah, well, let me ask you that. Mm -hmm. Do you all, will you all be going out to business? Because you all say you all work in business. Will you all be going out to business to make sure that they are, is there like a certain code that they have to go by or something like that? Well, so the, um, we're working with the Council of Smaller Enterprises, which mm -hmm. deals with the small businesses for the most part. Right. Um, they have, um, through some dollars they have, they've been able to do audits for small businesses to figure out, okay, you need a new lighting system, you need a new HVAC system, mm -hmm. um, and here's kind of specs on what we think will be helpful to you. Right. Uh, uh, the business will use that with us. So you say, hey, I'm really interested in becoming more efficient because it'll save money in the bottom line, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it'll upgrade my equipment within my, my, my business, right? So I'll, I'll save money, uh, which means I have more cash flow for, you know, other things, right? Right, uh, right. Um, and, you know, so we would, we'll work with them. Um, we've got this company called Utetix out of Minnesota that's coming in to okay. kind of help us understand, you know, help put together packaging ideas. So there's different ways you can finance this stuff, right? Uh, so maybe it's straight purchase. Maybe it's a, a thing called a power purchase agreement where someone else owns the equipment and you rent it for a 15-year period mm. of time. And, I've heard of that before. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, and that, that was especially with solar panels, it's more of a kind of a prevalent way. Right. Or maybe it's something you pay back over um, through your property. There's a thing called a PACE program where you can pay back through your property taxes. Right. Dollar. So there's different ways to finance this stuff. No business has to do it, right? That we're going to help them understand what their options are, what kind of the best practices are they could use in their business to right. become more efficient. And then, you know, assuming they like the 
the package as it's being presented to them. They either say, yes, this makes sense, and they'll do it, or they'll say, ah, I just may wait a little bit more. You know, I don't, you know, hopefully more businesses are going to say, yes, this makes sense, and sign up, um, and then we'll get this, you know, kind of, then they will contract with these private entities, the private kind of uh, funder that we've got available for us. Right. And then um, they'll purchase the equipment, we'll help them find good contractors uh, who are, um, uh, qualified under kind of the program, um, and we'll, you know we'll have some kind of qualification kind of standards that we've got for for people doing the work. Right. And then they will, you know, then they'll get their their stuff done. Right. I tell you what, we're gonna go to a commercial break. We come back. Got another question about that because, of course, you mentioned yeah. you know the president's dedication to it, and eventually you know the regulations will come down. You know, and so where some may say, okay, I will wait eventually it may cost them so we're going to talk about that when we come back this is cleveland inspirations i have um the director of the of the department it's always weird <laughs> the director of the department of sustainability for cuyahoga county mike foley is live in the studio <clears throat> i'm going to continue we're going to continue the conversation more when we come back after this commercial break so stay tuned Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, and the reason why I ask that because, mind you, some people, you know how people are, you say, oh, you have a choice to do something. Well, I'm not going to do it, especially if you tell me I got to, you know, do this, not do that. Right. But, you know, eventually, you know, as long as, because he, he still got, what, about a year, another year left? Who's to say he's not going to send out regulations, regulations to say, hey, I don't want all businesses to be at this certain code. Yeah, he won't do that. He can't do that, but he can he can affect power plants. So, first energy, he, the regulations are going to affect the big utilities, mm -hmm. and they're going to say that look, you cannot have power plants that are emitting X amount of. You know, what what he's saying to Ohio, you have to reduce your carbon emissions thirty per twenty five percent by the year. No. 30% by the year 2030 okay? mm -hmm. from all the sources of how you generate power into your power grid in the state of Ohio you have to reduce the amount of emissions that come from those generation sources by 30% by, by 2030 mm -hmm. from from 2005 benchmark so they benchmark it at 2005 emissions right. and so that and so the states are supposed to come up with their own plans on how to do this our state is fighting a tooth and nail but, but <laughs> you know but they're going to have to do it otherwise the feds are going to do it right um, and what it means is so utility companies like First Energy which mm -hmm. which would put a ton of power into Mine. the grid yeah. right are going to have to look at their you know the state's going to have to tell First Energy look this power source um, which is the Samus plant on, on the Ohio River maybe something like that is too dirty either mm -hmm. clean it up which will cost money or you're going to have to find other sources of power to put into the grid. Mm. So that's kind of that's how it's going to work. It won't be individual businesses saying you have to become more efficient. It's looking at the big utility companies to put the power, you know, the, generate the power and then put it onto the grid. Right. But then, like you said, in over time, that can that can really cost people money. So I mean, what is the benefit for the the um, I guess the, the fun the um energy sources then because if you're telling me you tell me I for, gotta, for first energy yeah there's none um other than that they need to become more efficient or and they need to put their money they need to start investing in solar power wind right. power they need to start investing in renewable resources wow which they should be doing anyway because <laughs> it's i mean seriously it's the stupidest these first energy is just incredibly stupid they know that they know where this thing is going you know they know that um Generation electricity is going to have to come from cleaner and cleaner and cleaner sources, right. and yet they're fighting tooth and nail to keep their old power sources, uh, you know, the the coal fired power plants, intact and not have it affect them. But my, you, 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 it's because money. That, that's what they make the money. Oh, of course. And if I if I go if I change, so you're telling me if I I got to do all this, but that means I make less money. It's no different than oil, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, except they're guaranteed. This is, this is. You know, our 
electric utility company, which is guaranteed a 10% profit, basically. So, wow. Because they're regulated in, under the PUCO. Wow. And we are back. We are back. This is Cleveland Inspirations. I'm your host, Mr. Yancey, and I have Mike Foley, who is the director for the Department of Sustainability for Cuyahoga County, live in the studio with me. It's a and, lot of uh, syllables in that. Title. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't want to go with the tongue twister, but yeah, the director for the Department of Sustainability for Cuyahoga County. Um, and well, let me ask you this because and we we talked about it before. You know, you all are also in well, yeah. Before we get to well, the question I had before the break, but you all are in a new facility, the Cuyahoga County building. How is that building? I've never been in it yet. It's a great building. I, I, um, and it's been uh, it was built in. I think they moved in in July or August of last year. Right. It's a um, it is a pleasant place to work. It's well lit. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's clean. It's kind of got that new building smell, you know, <laughs> um, it's, it really, I gotta say, it's a very pleasant place to work. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, now, because we're on the topic, mm -hmm. finance wise, I mean, how was, was it cheaper to make that build? I mean, to build that building, you know, especially again with the, the apartment that they just added to it, you know, you gotta think, okay, we, we can't just build a building and then turn around. Or spend spend a ton of money, but then tell everybody else, "Oh, you got to do it." Man. So, I mean, the process of building that building, man, what was that like? Well, I wasn't here then, so it was well, no, of course, but I'm just. <laughs> but, but I do know this is that um, it saved money. Uh, you can they consolidated eight different properties into the one building. Um, wow. Down on, on East Ninth Street, and um, I know. In fact, we you know through our department, we're actually looking at the um, the utility records and. Um, the electric uh, bills that were paid for all the eight that we're trying to put this together to show right. like the case that you know we've actually saved a lot of money just on utility bills uh, by consolidating all those other structures into this one building. So I mean, it's, those buildings were pretty old, pretty inefficient, and, and right. uh, this building is a is a really nice, solid place uh, that I think in the long run will save the county a lot of money. Right, and not only that, it's, it's somewhat so much I think, and I don't know, it's, it's right across the street from the. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right you know, that, right? yeah um but then again and and that was another thing that honestly people have questioned i didn't even lie to you i had a question about it because certain lighting structures have shown up through cleveland meaning the um i guess it for some people is beautiful but that big chandelier on <laughs> oh my goodness yes on uh euclid right yeah that's yeah, on right. euclid like mm -hmm. literally is that, I mean, when you, cause I don't, like they said, true enough, you weren't there yet, but that structure, is that built on, you know? I don't know. <laughs> right. I'm I just, imagine they, you know, imagine, you know, if they were smart, they would have uh, put as many LED light bulbs in that thing as possible. Cause right. Because the things are so much more efficient, but I just, I, I, I don't know. I'm right. I only ask it. because my, if, mm -hmm. and, and not to say it was, I'm, I'm, I didn't really see the big purpose for it. <laughs> I mean, it looks beautiful now, you know, then, of course, when you add the different the arches and stuff and, and like that, it's like, okay, it somewhat makes sense. But then we talk about sustainability and if cost efficiency, it's like, okay, so are we going to give her street lights or something for this yeah. big structure, no, you know? Right, no. Um, I, you know, I, yeah, I think, so look, part of all of our public life is there's aesthetics, there's you know, kind of uh, interesting designs of public space. Right. Um, and that's interesting, and you know. Uh, and, and so, you know, and we, we try to be as efficient as possible, it seems to me, and uh, energy efficient as possible. And um, But but also there's other aspects to our, you know, life as human beings in this city. Right. And, you know, and, you know, people thought that that was one of them, that that kind of, that yeah. arch and the... I, I, just, I just figured I'd ask, man, yeah. because I just thought that was the biggest waste of energy, you know, and... I mean, but you know, one one of the things is, that is a waste of energy is is streetlights. <clears throat> really? And, yeah, and a lot of them are um, are kind of old lighting systems. So that's actually one of the things we're looking at is is there a way for us to help uh, municipalities 
mm -hmm. the cities uh, buy back some of the street lights and put in LED light lighting fixtures in there so that they can save money. I mean, street lights are important. They're important to you know people getting around and right. and safety. Um, and but is but you know at least right now there's a kind of a four or five year old study that was done. It showed a lot of those street lights are pretty old, pretty inefficient, and they haven't been upgraded to be honest with you. So that's one of the things we're looking at. And the other thing we're looking at is is municipalities. So there's 59 local governments in Cuyahoga County. Right. Um, but un, under the um, the stimulus program from a couple of years ago, uh, under, under the Obama administration when he first came in, into uh, uh, his presidency, right, uh, there was money made available to municipalities to do to do look at to look at their energy systems and and um, audit, audits done on their their um, all their buildings, and so about thirty to thirty five of the cities took advantage of the the money that was made available and did pretty significant audits mm -hmm. energy audits. And came up with you know millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of you know retrofits and upgrades they could do that would save them a lot of money. Right. Unfortunately, it's at the same time that the state government was just gutting the you know cutting them off at the knees in terms of of funding and right in the middle of the recession. So cities had these kind of great audits on their you know bookshelf saying, right. Well, if we did X, Y, and Z, we could really save some money, uh, but they didn't have any money to do that. So one of the things we're hoping this new uh, program will do be able to help out, help out municipalities. Kind of fund some of those uh, those energy uh, upgrades that they've that they know they they can do and save mm -hmm. some money on, uh, and uh, and help them out. And that that's very important, you know. And I, I honestly didn't think about that. I mean, I see sometimes, you know, you see construction, but at the same time, you know, I, I was, uh, let me finish my statement. <laughs> I have a habit of doing that, but yeah, every once in a while, I see them changing lights, you know, ch um, upgrading street lights. But I very rarely see that, and not only that, I, I never even understood from what you just said. You know, the fact that that is a energy killer. It's like, wow, what do you mean? It's a street light, and I know. I mean, so even how about this? Now, at, at certain times, they turn it. Some lights turn into flash. Or some street lights turn into flashlights. Is that an energy saver or? I mean, because I'm yeah. thinking that that would be an energy saver, you know, especially here or even on Superior, you know, certain lights flash. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe they're saving energy that way. Yeah, you, no, I think that's, you mean the traffic lights? The right. Green, red, yeah. No, I think that's more just kind of, they know that the traffic has died down and they're just saying, you know, we're trying to not impede people as they're driving. But this, and so that's You're talking part, about, I mean, you're not talking about, the, you're yeah. talking about the... The lights on the side. Yeah, on the side, right? Okay, all okay. The, all those lights, and I guess, and I suppose the traffic lights as well, but more so the street lights that are on the side that help just light up the community. You know, right, like right. Up, uh, you know, the hundred square yards or hundred or fifty yards of, uh, on either side. And I've never seen any of those upgraded ever. Well, and so in, in this county, most of those things are owned uh, and maintained by first energy and they just wow uh, so one of the things are, is you know is there a way that the cities can have more control over that that's one of the things where because uh, the cities pay the bills on uh, um, for those and they pay a maintenance fee on each one of those you know poles mm -hmm. and lighting fixtures and we're trying to figure out is there a way that the cities can have kind of more control over that to be honest with you so, right and we was talking about this during the break you know in regards to um how how these um the, some of the things that you all are trying to do how is it going to affect business of course you said that it's not going to affect the small business per se but the energy sources you know they they really have to clean up otherwise it could hurt them so the big utility companies right. are going to be forced uh under the obama administration uh regulations that are coming out epa regulations coming out in summer uh, are going to be forced to clean up the grid Mm -hmm. Have to reduce the um, uh, the rule. I think is going to state that they have to reduce, uh, in, especially in the state of Ohio. I know that the, I know our state uh, numbers, but it looks like they're going to have to reduce by thirty percent the amount of carbon uh, dioxide that's emitted in the atmosphere from two thousand five levels mm -hmm. by the year twenty thirty. So that means that uh, it's going to become they're they're going to have to spend more money on these pretty old efficient power plants that they've got right um, or uh, start helping people use less energy through more energy efficiency type mm -hmm. programs or look at every other sources of, uh, of generation of electricity uh, which is our renewables 
Um, some instances it'll be natural gas, but which is a, a lower carbon emitting fuel than, than coal. Right. But they've got to look at better ways to generate electricity than dirty coal. And coal is dirty and it's, it's harmful. It's really harmful. Well, of course, when we talk about coal mines, yeah, <laughs> that almost like, duh, people die down there. But now at the same time, but it also could, because some will say, well, they're doing their best because they talk about the different light bulbs. So it goes beyond just a light bulb, getting better light bulbs. You you have to go to the source first. Don't just wait till it gets to the house. Oh, you're using the wrong light bulbs. If maybe if you use better light bulbs, then we can save energy. How about you change your energy source like now it makes more sense when it gets to the house right to save energy yeah it's, it's a look it's there's a couple of different you know ways of looking at this or, or attacking the problem right one is by all of us trying to develop become more efficient you know right um and kind of take matters into our own hands where we can take matters into our own hands which is our own electricity production you know uh, usage you know light lighting fixtures right uh the other, though, which will have in the long run will have more effect and, and more scale, is going after the, the utility companies and saying, "Look, you get the generation how you generate electricity is very, very harmful, uh, right? And you have to reduce the um, the pollution that you're putting in the atmosphere from those generation sources." And, and that's what the, the EPA regs, uh, when they come out uh, this summer, are going to say. Right. Now, again, when you're talking about um, what we can do, and some people don't really know. You know I say they, they'll go to the store and they'll see light bulbs. I've seen the same light. Now, actually, I have those light bulbs in my house, the little coils, so to speak. I have those in my house. But um, some people don't realize, you know, exactly what they're talking about. They cost more up front, but, they're gonna, but especially the LEDs will last, you know, 15 years now mm. and they'll use you know they'll use uh 20 percent of what the of, of the power you know that was used from the old kind of power uh, the, the old light bulbs basically right so the amount of wattage that they you know they put out the same amount of light but the power it takes to put out that light is so much less that your elect your month-to-month -month electric electrical bill or electricity bill mm -hmm. will be way down compared to what what the usage is now right but now Again, for those who, for some reason, reason are oblivious to what we're talking about right now, you all, what is, what is the Department of Sustainability going to do um, as far as educating the public? Um, again, to to what we may know, and of course, like I said, it may cost a little more, but overall, you know, everybody talks about Mother Earth. You know, if you really want to say Mother Earth, you really have to do this, but you have to be educated right. on doing that. So it's us coming in and talking to you, right? And, and talking on <laughs> the radio. Uh, and it's not it's gonna cost you a little bit more up front, but in the long run it's gonna save you money. It's it's one thing. So it's gonna save you money in the long run, uh, and it's gonna reduce pollution in the atmosphere. It's gonna reduce emissions into the atmosphere from the generation source. So less energy you use is a good thing. Uh, right. especially if you still put out the same amount of light that you need to, to read or or, or walk around your house, right? So our job at the Department of Sustainability is one is to get this program set up and started, which we got the first part of that done today when we got um, uh, county government to agree to spend two, $225,000 from county government to okay. procure the services of this company out of Minneapolis that brings with it $120 million worth of investment in energy mm -hmm. efficiency programs and, and solar programs. So, um, so we've, we started that today. Um, it's ramping. We will be, we, we are on emails and phone calls all day today. Right. So we're starting to ramp up the program. Uh, we hope to have by the end of May, kind of the first, you know, set of businesses that will be able to announce or institutions will be able to announce have taken advantage of the program just because of right now, it's just word of mouth right. uh, from, uh, Chanel Smith, who's the deputy director, myself, and, right, and, right. and business that we know are interested in this and cozy. But hopefully by the end of May, early June, we'll have a uh, kind of a clear, easy to understand way for people to access uh, the program, the financing. Right. Um, and it, at least for probably about the first six months, it'll just be for businesses and institutions, nonprofits, uh, kind of organizations. But hopefully by the end of this year, 
uh, and early next year we'll be able to get this set up for residents to take care uh, homeowners and residential places to take care or take advantage of it as well right and that, that's all as far as are you all going to set up some kind of type of educational programs or you know no different in, i don't know fire safety but you know mm -hmm. you have i'm and the county, I guess maybe I'm, I'm kind of speaking, I don't work for the county, but I'm just thinking, you know, mm -hmm. some type of educational department to where within a department say, hey, go out here or yep. go to different community resource centers and say, hey, yeah. you know, this is what the department, you probably have never heard of it, you know, it's a part of the county. I don't even know what the county is. No, I'm messing. <laughs> like, I live in Cuyahoga County. There's a council? But no. Right. So that's that's part of the ones the things that we need to do that we are going to be doing, and also to make it hopefully clearer than I've been able to say it today, but as clear and understandable and accessible as possible. I mean, right? You know, it's, it's you know putting together one page, you know forms, one page ex explanation sheets, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, trying to make this is you know, look. This is really important stuff, right? Uh, um, you know, we're one county in a whole world, right? Right, but, right. We, but, but we also have, we also live here and we've got an obligation to, to, to do the best we can do, it seems to me, around energy and environmental um, related items. And, um, you know, so I, and I take that seriously. I know you do too. And others right, well. right, right. Um, but I, I want to make this program as successful um, as possible. I want to make it a model for other counties to emulate. And I want to make it as user friendly uh, and understandable to people of Cuyahoga County as we can possibly do. So, so if I'm not doing that, then, you know, in a month or two, and you're looking at the, you know, the web page, or you're looking at Mike, I'm not hearing anything from you. I'm hoping you'll let me know that. So. Right. Well, I mean, again, all, all I'm looking at, like I said, when I see all the construction going up, and you know, you see the different um, equipment and stuff out there. I mean, me personally, I, I'm I'm not asthmatic or anything like that. But my have signed it that that uh, triggered very easily, and yeah. so mind you, I don't want to go anywhere, and honestly, feel uncomfortable. Like I said, even when we talk about the cow, the, the county building, it's like okay, this place is beautiful, and like you said, all the light stuff, and it's more energy efficient. Yeah. But then you go to all these other places, and of course, how you say they pass the safe, they don't pass the safe. <laughs> they they pass the 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 um what's the word I'm looking for. Well, whatever they have to pay, it's like, okay, well, we got to, you know, raise prices for this. And I was like, okay, why don't you just become more energy efficient? Now we, again, you're saving money. You're saving money. Now you can save us money. And then, of course, I mean, if you're looking at the big picture, now we're looking at a more um, economically um, sustain. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, economically um, sound environment you know mm -hmm. not just because oh well, I'm, I'm able to cut prices but mind you people are able to live longer which of course again long term speaking this is that's what another thing that people have to understand this is not just a short-term solution this is a solution that could really affect and have a long-term um okay. effect right. you know again we're talking about building futures for our children and somehow some way i find a way to bring to bring family into any <laughs> conversation you know well, the other thing, I mean, and so we've been talking about energy and electricity all day, but, but we, we, you know, this county, we especially in this county um, and in the Great Lakes region, to be honest with you, you need to understand that there's going to be a lot of pressure in other parts of the country. Um, you know, the drought that's going on in California. Yes, I heard about is, that. Uh, it's, uh, um, right now it's a four-year drought, but uh, scientists believe it is not going to end for a long, long, long time. And so, I mean, they've got less than one year. NASA uh, came out with a report last month saying that uh, most portions of California have less than one year left of groundwater um, wow. under, underneath the ground in California. Um, California and the West Coast and, and drought-stricken areas, um, you know, there's going to be more pressures on places like Cleveland uh, that are on fresh water, right? Right. Uh, to, you know, for development from... From people leaving California potentially because they, you know, they want fresh water, right? Right. So we, we, we've got. We, I, it seems to me that one of the things that's very important for this department and for this county for everybody is that uh, we recognize that you know environment. The environment uh, also means you know just the real life uh, day to day uh, uh, means and, and measures of everybody in this uh, in this community because we're going to have pressures from. Uh, 
you know, uh, uh, drought stricken areas of new places coming here who right. maybe want our water. <laughs> right, uh, right. Uh, we, we've got the the problems of climate change and their effect on people with asthma in the community. We've mm-hmm. got just prices of electricity that are that are going to be dependent upon lots of different factors. Um, and it seems to me that in, in this place, especially in Cuyahoga County, we've got uh, an op- obligation to take advantage uh, to obligation to be as clean and sustainable as possible. Right. Uh, and because uh, it's going to affect us, it's going to affect our children, and our children's children, and there's going to be more pressures put on places like Cleveland. Right now, and, and when you mentioned that, because I did have somebody mention the um, drought <clears throat> to me, and I, I didn't realize. I mean, I heard about. California might then again California is known for everything wrong. <laughs> you know, as far as um well number one, earthquakes. I don't I mean <laughs> it's like do you sh- I'll never forget what I first heard about California. It's like one day California may not even be a part of the United States. <laughs> what do you mean by that? But, you know, yeah, that but then yeah, and I I mean when I visited California some years back, I didn't even realize that. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was pretty hot. But then like you said, when you talk about fresh water, and then you have a place like Cuyahoga County or Cleveland in the different cities within Cuyahoga County, you know, that's what I mean. Again, when we talk about Cleveland inspirations, that true enough, we talk about Cleveland, but being able to inspire another part of the world, most people don't understand that, or another part of the country, mm-hmm. like, wow, hold on, wait a minute. Cleveland is not as bad as they think, you know, first of all, especially right, when they yeah. started clean, like you said, right. started to use clean energy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now, here it is. We're not just talking about Cleveland for, you know, okay, well, LeBron James is there, but they're also a source for clean energy or clean water, right. which, again, California doesn't have. Right. They, yeah. Look, they're nervous out there. I mean, there's a level of anxiety and uh, a lot of California communities that is just, uh, you know, it's re- it's getting close to reaching breaking point, and then we're just starting summer, right? So wow, um, yeah. I mean, and, and you know, they get a lot of their water from snow, you know, uh, mountains and snow, and and they had a terrible, they again had a terrible um, season of uh, precipitation hitting the mountains out there. So mm. the, uh, there, you know, there's problems out in the West in terms of. Uh, having access to fresh water and so it's it's just something we need to be aware of and be smart about right because we've got it um the great lakes account for um something like 80 percent of all the fresh water in the united states wow and um uh, so we need to kind of understand that and take that re- take that responsibility of having it um you know not take it lightly well i tell you what mike um i appreciate you um for coming down to the studio and yeah. Of course, you you still I, I put it where you're, you're definitely important to us regardless because you support what we do, and for the work that you've done, we definitely um, find that to be very interesting and definitely support what you're doing. Thanks. How can people find out more about the Department of Sustainability and um, the work that even Cuyahoga County, um, yeah, the Cuyahoga so, County is doing? Um, as I said, we're, we've been around for two months, right? So we don't have a web page yet. We're still trying to figure all that stuff out. But if you go to CuyahogaCounty.us on mm-hmm. the web, um, actually the, the county has a very good web page. It, it really does. Um, and hopefully soon enough, uh, we will have kind of our own tab or, you know, sus- right. part of sustainability that will especially highlight the, um, the clean energy work that we're doing. So, I mean, it's kind of... You know, in our list of things to do, that's about right now. Right next, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks, that'll be up on on the on the web page. It's like, hey, we're here, yeah. but wow, what do we do now? <laughs> well, it is. It was you know the the charge we've been given is pretty broad. It, it has a lot of things, and so uh, kind of figuring out our place in the world, and, and you know, there's a lot of good people who are doing a lot of good things in Cuyahoga County and, and we're not trying to step on anyone's toes or, right. or um, you know, especially around sustainability issues. But, but we think that this, especially with this energy stuff um, and energy financing, it's a niche we can fill and, and it's a big one we can fill actually. Uh, and right. It's important. So um, we're, you know, we've been kind of building for, towards this for, uh, for the last, you know, since I just got, since I've been there for the last two months and we've put this together 
um, and and kind of in the middle of everything else, then you got to figure out, all right, boy, we've got to do a web page too, you know, right? <laughs> Things like that. But so. the major mm-hmm. thing is, over long term wise, you're definitely going to see a dif- we'll, we'll see, see, see a difference in Cuyahoga County again as far as energy and like I said, first definitely um, cost efficient, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cost efficient, uh, energy uh, efficient, and environmentally efficient. Uh, hopefully, new products for not products, but uh, systems in buildings and businesses and schools and in cities and, and eventually homes. So. Excellent. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to go to a commercial break again. I appreciate um, Mike Foley for joining us live in the studio. And uh, definitely go to Cuyahoga County. Um, US and eventually you'll see a t- <laughs> you'll see yeah, the tab sure. for the Department of Sustainability. You'll see Mike Foley's picture right there as the director of the Department of Sustainability. We're going to go to a commercial break. Uh, this is, again, Cleveland Inspirations. I'm your host, Mr. Yancey. Stay tuned. <laughs> 